Speaker this morning is Yogananda, not me. I'm just the newspaper boy. I deliver the news. <laughs> the what I'm going to give you today is the condensation and train you to become the architect, preparing your destiny. Paramahansa Yogananda, speaking from cosmic perception, revealed to us that even though the fate is unfolding according to specific design cycle of evolution known as yugas, that is, that the news of tomorrow, next month, next year, next thousand year, next ten thousand year, next hundred thousand years is already made. The movie is already made and it consists of 314 trillion years of entertainment known as the day of Brahma. Carl Sagan, uh, he tried to figure that out, but he just couldn't come close enough to the teaching of India. Therefore, the mass consciousness, everything is already pre-programmed. However, I depend entirely upon becoming the conscious architect and designer of our present life as well as future life if necessary. What we have to do is to become conscious, that is, to separate our mind from pre-programmed, more or less, the same trend of thoughts and feelings. Therefore, this side of the liberation, now, remember when you want to attain your final divinity. As the Ashtavakra Samhita, the great yogi said, if you seek after liberation, my child, shun the object of the senses as poison. Seek forgiveness, sincerities, kindness, and truth as nectar. Therefore, for those of you who have enough of this endless cycle of reincarnations, now is the knowledge for you which you will have to apply. Therefore, the master of this of the liberation must dissociate his mind from the mass media and think independently free from the limitation imposed by this present age. When you leave the body, the 20th century will not be responsible for you for what you have acquired, good or bad habits in this world. Therefore, this technique of scientific healing affirmation, like every other technique of yoga, is if practice with the various principles which I will review for you today, will completely modify the subconscious influences which determine what kind of biochemical fixation you will experience in your brain cells and your entire being, which completely regulate from your neuron, from your brain, the ribonucleic acid, ribonucleic acid determine what kind of feeling, what kind of thoughts, what kind of word, and what kind of action you are going to do. Your subconscious is as all within itself, as I will explain to you today, the various discs which determine how you are going to behave today. That is why William James, one of the most eminent psychologists of his time, uttered a truth which only now began to be gradually understood. He said, he declared that the greatest revolution in his generation was the discovery that human beings, by changing the inner attitudes of their mind, can change the outer aspect of their lives. Inner attitude of the mind. What does that mean, inner attitude? You will learn today. This revolution is here now, as written in the autobiography of a yogi, and a tribute by the German who said about the autobiography of a yogi. In these pages, as well as the entire teaching of Yogananda, is the undeniable proof that only the mental and spiritual and that he can conquer all material obstacles by inner strength. We must credit this important, this important biography with the power to bring about a spiritual revolution. What William James was saying must be interpreted through the science of yoga, that is, to change your inner attitude, meaning to reprogram the various computer in your subconscious mind, responsive for the specific biochemical fixation in our brain cells, leading us to think, feel, will, and act in a certain way. In other words, what is a habit? 
The biochemical fixation, which works by remote control. You smoke, you smoke, you smoke, or you do drink or drink, not because you want to, but you can't help yourself because your cells have been programmed that way. Therefore, this microchip, or rather disks, which contain previous incarnation characteristic behavior, is translated in yogic terminology as samskaras. The etymology of words in India is so far superior to our Western world, which means are the psychological blueprint residues contain in a subconscious and superconscious mind. These samskaras creates or some total of your thoughts, feeling, word and action of a lifetime, are magnetic field which draw each incarnation one soul into a specific genetic code, that is, a predominant positive or a negative environment. We are reborn to the magnetic attractions of what we have done before, because remember, every action you have is, we, when you die with your physical brain, your astral brain of energy, which is in the world beyond, which the next body you will wear, as all the information of the thing you have recorded on Earth, and so is the causal world. Even though the genetic code of a family or its character trait are not always responsible for the behavior of their children. An example of Bornman, son, the eminence grace of Adolf Hitler, the worst man among the Nazis, his son became a priest. Then we have Wes Hardin, the, the son of a preacher, who shot 32 people during the Old West, son of a preacher. Or we have General Douglas MacArthur's son, who changed his name because he could not bear to be called MacArthur, so great was his father. Therefore, you cannot accuse the, the family of being responsible for your genetic code, even though if you're an alcoholic in a previous life, most likely you will. Therefore, some scalar meaning in physics, kinetic potential or dormant energy within you. It is why the Master say your outer and inner environment is extremely important to not trigger in you the worse. He said, so we understand that samskaras are the dormant trace of our past karma. Our guru call it ticking bombs. As the breath links the mind with the body, similarly the samskaras link the soul with the reservoir of karma in the subconscious mind. It is the subconscious mind that is the vehicle in which the soul travels from this plane of life to another place of ego consciousness. As long as the soul uses the subconscious mind, which is known by Jung as the unconscious, the storehouse of merits and demerits of our past life, we cannot become free from our karmas at all. It impeaches our free will. That is, when you are born, you are told that 75% of your free will is taken away from you. You have only 25%. That is to act. And this present link of life is but one link in the chain. Therefore, read in divine, the book Divine Romance page 298 to 303, the known and the unknown, where for the first time of your life you will have a full explanation of how much free will you really have. And this is the word of Yogananda. Therefore, as long as our lives is not supervised and guided by our own conscience, cosmic intuitive intelligence of God within ourselves, so long shall we be the slave of an uncontrolled subconscious mind, meaning the automatic blueprint for us, life after weary life, we shall be controlled like humanoids. The very refusal of working with your conscience, you cannot cheat yourself. You can place yourself in, a in such a state of confusion, yet you can't differentiate anymore between what is right and wrong. However, the moment you begin to meditate, and it is why so few people are interested in meditation, it reawakens your God-given intelligence as your conscience. And when you use your conscience, you bypass all karmic influence from the subconscious mind, because that subconscious is connected with your higher self. 
Each time you listen to your ego, you go down. Each time you listen to your soul, you move forward. Quite simple, isn't it? The subconscious mind consists of nothing but human desire. The superconsciousness of the soul consists of nothing but spiritual desire. Therefore, in which mind are you living every day? Simple, isn't it? Let us sing together, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee. Many times during the day, for a few seconds, learn to stop and say, my Lord, I have not forgotten you, my God. Learn to do that. Remember God during the day. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget thee. I will never forsake thee. I will never forget thee. I will never forsake thee. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee, I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee. I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. Listen, listen, listen to my heart song. I will never forget thee, I will never forsake thee, I will never forget thee. To be able to touch the hearts of God, you have to be very sincere. Learn to do this. Before next time you say to your wife, I love you, practice for about five minutes saying that word until you feel it. And once you, have, you begin to really feel it, you go to your wife and say, darling, I love you. And see if your wife reacts. If she reacts, then you have reached God. If you have not, she has no, she does just use of the half meaning of your words, then you have not reached God either. Remember, God is not a platonic lover. It's hard to understand, but uh, one of the great yogis in civilization said, God is like a woman. He constantly wants some sign of affection. What is the marriage life? It's like the monastic life. You learn to, how to behave properly so you can be in love. That's all. Therefore, what is interesting is that the, if you look at the etymology in the Webster, what is the subconscious mind which we carry the soul used as a vehicle from life to life? So the subconscious vehicle in which the soul travels from this plane of life to another place of ego consciousness is etymologically defined as follows in the Webster. As the totality of mental processes of which the individual is not aware. Unreportable mental activities. What does that make us? Complete humanoids. We think we are thinking, we think we are feeling what we are just moving every day by remote control. Just look at the world. The subconscious mind is the memory repository of the conscious mind. It contains its memory bank, the experiences of every incarnation we have ever lived. Probably more than 500,000 human incarnations. And you and me are still here. <laughs> Being automatic, it reproduces good and bad memories equally. Hence, the subconscious mind must be trained by the conscious mind. Here, 
the, the conscious mind means the super consciousness or a mind which is inexorably fixed in the purity and absolute positiveness of the intuition of the soul known as buddhi. The Hindus tell us things we don't even know in our present psychiatry. We have two minds. That is buddhi where in gradually one drop ego consciousness and realizes self as a soul made in the image of God. Therefore, the subconscious mind consists mostly of human desire. Therefore, the great struggle with the yogi is to become detached. When he wants to do something, say, Lord, if this desire does not lead me to a higher state of consciousness, help me to get rid of it. Next time you want to buy a bottle of a Johnny Walker black label, you say, Lord, I don't think it's too good for me, that stuff. Try to get it out of my hands. Fight it out, you have no idea. I just read one of, of Patton's, George Patton prayer. In the middle of the battle, he, he was being beaten by the German. They were wiped, particularly wiped out. Uh, Patton said, Lord, now on which side are you? First you come to us and you help us to beat the German. Now you change horse in the midstream. We're getting the beating of our life. Are you going to help us or what? I have prayers of Patton. I can't believe that man was talking straight to God. As we should. God don't want such mumbling prayers. He wants to hear you loud and clear of what you want. Remember, I told you he's a little bit hard of hearing. <laughs> so, the subconscious mind is mostly human desire. The superconscious mind, only divine desire. All care should be taken at only good thoughts and good feeling percolate from the conscious mind. That is, the willing, determined conscious awareness in the subconscious mind, not subliminal influences. It may work out for smoking, subliminal influences may work for all kind of thing, but not to know God. Because the subliminal work with thoughts and superconsciousness work with total intuitive feelings. It has nothing to do with thoughts, with ideas. It cannot reach the superconscious mind. Since the subconscious, superconscious does not work with thought but pertain to the intuitive realm of soul awareness, gains the daily practice of communion with our inner self, called meditation, or the absorption of our ego into superconsciousness. What are you trying to do in meditation? You are going to reinstate to your true identity. When you turn toward God, He reawakens to who you are. When you are in tune with the world, it structures constantly something which you are not. When you die, you realize you are not the body, you are not the mind, and you have achieved nothing, because you have not become aware of your own soul consciousness. Therefore, the subconscious mind is the magnetic chart of positive attraction or negative repulsive attraction, that is, ego or soul identification. The more you are identified with your ego, the more your body disintegrates. Because every cell of your body is held together by the power of attraction and repulsion. And therefore, if you are constantly in, wor in a worldly attention, gradually your body is going to disintegrate. Even me today, the 23rd, I went flat on my face, sick like a dog, worse than I've ever been. Why? Because as you move to the subconscious mind, years after years after years after year, you enter some very dark room where a nucleus of destructive thoughts are waiting for you, and you have to walk through it, and but it blocks the lights. As the master says, how can energy be sick? You are nothing but energy. Huh? By blocking the energy. Huh? From the subconscious mind. And that is the discovery of the future. Therefore, the subconscious mind is really the magnetic chart which is written in astrology, in palm reading, and in different psychic research. It takes a very evolved person. Now, stop believing those people who tell you they can see your past incarnations. Only a master can do that. And he won't. You know why? Because nothing will convince you until you see it for yourself as I have seen. God will teach you and show you directly yourself, your past incarnation. You don't need nobody. You are the channel yourself. Therefore, the Master said, it takes a very evolved person to reach the subtle trace of the superconscious mind 
possible achievement, as most of these signs deal mostly with your subconscious chart, which is the source of all physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual disease. That subconscious mind is the, really the, the, our enemy unless we learn how to control it. When you are sitting in meditation, what's happening to you? You can't even control your thoughts, isn't it? Take the most brilliant mind in, in the world and put an electroencephalograph in his brain and see if he can stop his mind. Therefore, the psychosomatic generator of thoughts, feeling, word and will and actions is the subconscious mind. It is a general practice to store in the attic all the one's unwanted, unnecessary junk and once in a while to have a good house cleaning. Similarly, hidden away in the attic of the subconscious mind are many potentially harmful desires that one day may give you great trouble. Therefore, the master say, watch your company. The company which you are with is nothing but the motion of energy, magnetic energy, which can trigger in you some pretty evil tendencies which you have acquired in previous life, but which are presently dormant. You don't want to reawaken that. That's why you stay away from all foul movies. Stay all horror movies, all that stuff, crimes, and stay away from anything which begins to reawaken the morbid side of your ego, which is pretty awful. Therefore, it is important, therefore, to analyze yourself. Perhaps you are a hateful, or moody or angry type of a person. If so, these stored traits are the result of your past behavior. In order to clean out your mental attic of such unwanted furnishing, furnishing, you must vigorously employ constructive, positive, loving actions. He say vigorously, not subliminal. With full awareness, I will. You have to do it. Okay, it will not be done for you. It will be too too nice if you could just put something under your pillow at night and rebuild your mind. I went to Sri Yamata. They used to do that in the Navy, you know. In the Army, they used that. It worked for many fields. And I asked Sri Yamata, and he says, yeah. yeah. You go to a person, to your wife, and say, I love you, 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 I love you. So she's surely going to believe you, you know. Therefore, so you must vigorously employ constructive, positive, loving action. How? Huh? By remembering that each thought and feelings of depression or happiness, instability or calmness, cut, subtle groove in the brain cells. What does it mean? Cut, subtle groove, create biochemical fixation. In every neuron, they say there is an astronomical, astronomical numbers of possibilities of various chemistry to change your personalities. In fact, there are more possibilities in your human brain to change your personality than there are molecules in the universe. So your, our physical brain is cosmic. Therefore, everything is a, is a chemical principle. Therefore, he said, once they are established, it becomes a subtle groove in the brain itself, condition or regulate the specific repulsive or attractive vibration and biochemistry which structure our 100 billion cells and strengthen the tendencies toward sickness or well-being. Do you realize the kind of body you have? All of you have seen the Encyclopedia Britannica, don't you? I have 39 vol 31 volume. Every single cell of your body has enough information to feel 70,000 volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Every single cell of our body. We are cosmic, and we don't even know it. Even this physical form is cosmic. But we maintain it in an animal life because the subconscious mind programs us so. Against our will, because we don't use it. Therefore, the Master say in the teaching of Paramahansa Yogananda, you often hear the advice of playing the proper script of your life on a stage of, life, of time and space. I've told you many times that there are many different scripts how you can play according to the will of God. The more you surrender your life to God, the more your destiny, the, a new script is being given to you. And your whole life changes 190 degrees gradually if you do what the Master requires to you. 
He said, it's only and in the degree that we are able to use our free choice of our intuitive mind, we gradually play the proper part as assigned by God. That is the discovery of our true divine identity, which is the goal of life. Now, in the following, Paramahansa Yuna tells us that it is the subconscious mind which maintains in us this cosmic amnesia and our, our soul being helplessly led by the subconscious mind is dreaming the de deadly sleep of elusive life conditioned by time and space. He says, man and his dream consciousness perceive a dream and use his memory and knowledge and his reaction to it by the like and dislike of his heart to play the drama of dreams. But when he ceases to dream, his dream experience vanishes. Meaning, meaning that when he sees to behold the, the world from the telepathic, holographic pictures of this world created by the subconscious mind, you will behold a completely different world. That's why the master say, if you can put that lunatic mind behind the bars of self-control, you will behold a completely different world. And my dear, this is not intellectual rationalization. You will realize what uh, you are being told only in the degree that you lift your consciousness to higher platform of perceptions. Here, it is 5% knowledge, 95% practice. Similarly, the master said, through his power of Maya, God hypnotized deluded men and women to use their perceptions, memory and heart to play the play of drama of dreams, material existence. A person becomes attached to his dream experience because he does not realize that he is only an actor speaking the line given to him. The Lord is the only playwright. We are just, as the master say, animated cartoon. He say, we marionettes come and go in this show. Therefore, the kind of memory bank subconscious or superconscious memory, which one are you using to guide your daily life? What kind of memory? Do you remember who you are? No. You don't even know your name. Sat Chit Ananda is your name, not what you are wearing now. Ever blissfully conscious of your eternal existence. So in India, Namarupa, name and form has no meaning. Therefore, the kind of memory bank, subconscious or superconscious memory, which one are you using in the, to guide your daily life, will determine how much power you will have to remodel your <coughs> destiny. Scientific healing affirmation, you will learn today, remain the soul of what it already has. You do not have to acquire omniscience, omnipotence, and omnipresence. You have to reawaken it to bring all things back to memory. To bring all things back to memory means to contact the superconsciousness of the soul. Therefore, and what it does not have because of forgetfulness. This subconscious mind has veil after veil after veil of dense vibration of obliviousness from God. God is light, the subconscious mind is darkness. Therefore, affirmation remains the soul of what it already has and what it does not have because of forgetfulness. They are statements of truth and are completely different from begging prayers. Beggars seldom get what they want from the Father. What does that mean? Affirmation, thou art my Father, success and joy. I am thy child, success and joy. All the wealth of the world and the riches of the universe belong to thee, my father. I am thy child. All the wealth of the world and the universe belong to me, or oh, belong to me. I lived in thoughts of poverty, and only fancy I was poor. So I was poor. But now I am home, thy consciousness is making me rich, worthy, healthy, and strong. Those are the affirmations which you will find. If you apply them, you will never be broke. I started with $20 a month in self-realization. 36 years after, I have $40 a month. 
But you give me enough money so I can send to the Sioux Indian in South Dakota who have got nothing. You have taken care of me. Why? Because I live for all of you. You are taken care. The moment you begin to go with God, you will feel that as you begin to share whatever you have with those who have nothing, God begins to pour more in you so you can give more. That's exactly what's happened to me. But the Reformed son trying through the steady practice of meditation to remember that he's a child of God can by a mean of affirmation have anything. The proper application of the veritary laws. Now, one of the problems in trying to remember that you are a child of God is that you cannot do any wrong anymore. He can get angry, he can get mean, he can have no kind of wrong thoughts because you are immediately corrected by your conscience. Therefore, I am in a straight jacket. Not only in a robe, but in a straight jacket, I'm telling you. I walk, uh, I get the worst at the, behind that podium. If you think I'm hard on you sometime, remember I get much worse than that. Therefore, the few minutes I have now, let's go through questions and answers. Why are affirmations powerful? Because it remains the soul of what it already has, and what it does not have because of forgetfulness. Why are they different from begging prayer? They are statements of truth, and applied, if you apply them properly with subtle application of vibratory cosmic law, which are the laws of magnetism, the stronger you are sending, the more powerful the magnetism comes back to you. Why, what type of speech is most powerful? Every word you utter should be potent with soul vibration. Huh? Word saturated with sincerity. Now learn to abide by the truth. You can never, never lie between husband and wife. There is nothing worse you can do to your marriage life. As Hidayamata said, if you want to see a person who is lying to itself, you see a person which is confused. He cannot differentiate between what is real and what is unreal. Therefore, truth is the foundation of your spiritual development. Therefore, word saturated with sincerity, conviction and faith and intuition are like highly explosive vibratory bombs, which when set off will shatter the rock of difficulties and create the change desired. Now, most of us, we have one common bad quality, impatience. We think after six months of meditation or six years or 60 years of meditation, we are going to make it. My dear, everything depends upon your sincerity and your attunement with God. Everything is the grace of God. But the effort must be made, and above all, be patient. I qualify patience as the virtue of the dead. <laughs> but it, is, it has to become the virtue of the living, believe me, especially in yoga. What are the two prime facts that cannot be separated from healing? First, Faith, as an intuitive conviction. What does that mean, intuitive conviction? When your faith is spring from your superconsciousness, there is no more doubt. When your faith is only your subconscious mind, it is based upon the laws of duality. One moment you believe, one moment you disbelieve. One moment you are positive, one moment you are negative. Only when you are established into the superconsciousness can your faith be really established. Therefore, we say, faith as intuitive conviction, for faith is the key which unlock the door to divine assistance. And are you going to prove your faith? Perseverance, the whole magic of success. Look at me. Two years do managing five times a day. Then where is to Yananda? Oh, he's in the hospital, he's doing an operation. Come out of the operation like that. <laughs> Then I go to the desert, I go nine day fast, which I'm going to do next week, nine day fast, managing ten times a day, two and a half hours a day of training to charm my body's cosmic consciousness. One month after, a gift from Shanghai, China, the flu. <laughs> so you say, my God, is the karma waiting in line to clobber me or what? <laughs> yeah. Yes, my dear, if you want to advance rapidly in a spiritual path, some of the karma, you have to work it out. The, the guru cannot take everything. Some of it, you have to, it splash all over the place, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a friend of mine, he got the shot to prevent himself to go to have the flu. You know where he went? Straight to the hospital. 
that shop give him the flu. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't avoid your car no matter what you try to do, you know. Therefore, second concentration. There lie our rub, the, the concentration. The affirmation seed in that s- small book there of scientific healing affirmation. I don't have many, I got stuck. But uh, there are, if you don't have that book, get it. That's why everything I'm telling you is inside. He say, this, <coughs> the affirmation seed in this book have been impregnated with soul inspiration. There must be sown in the soil of superconscious peace and watered by your face and concentration to create inner motil, which means moving spontaneously vibration that will help the seeds to germinate. You are fighting in those affirmations your own subconscious mind. In what state of consciousness one must attain to make his affirmation fruitful? The moment the affirmation reaches the superconscious mind and the inner conviction of the soul, a volley of energy will shoot down through the spine and into the body. The vibration of that current will electrocute physical disease germs, paralyzing mental fear and conflagrating soul ignorance and into ashes. When you reach the superconsciousness, physical, mental, emotional and spiritual disease are healed. How and by what process can we reach the superconscious realm? The way to the superconscious mind from the conscious lies to the subconscious state in order to reach the superconscious realm. That is, your subconscious mind, which you have to cross, my dear, is located between your lower chakras, called as the muladhara, or the coccyx center. Between the lower chakras, coccyx, sacral, lumbar, dorsal, lie the subconscious mind. This is called the door between two worlds, sons of God, sons of men. The yogis explain that. Therefore, here are located all the five senses. Therefore, unless you begin constantly to meditate and leave that energy from lower centers, you are totally living in a subconscious mind. That's why they say, my son, shun the object of the senses as poison. Learn to moderate your sensual life. Otherwise, you will remain forever in your subconscious programming. It has nothing to do with ethic, moral codes, co- uh, it is energy, energy in motion. There is no argumentation in yoga, you know. It's scientific. Therefore, he said, the, the way to the superconscious mind from the conscious lies through the subconscious state in order to reach the superconscious realm. And that's, you have to go and in order to all affirmation, in order to reach the superconsciousness, must be free from uncertainty and doubt. Attention and faith are light that lead even a perfectly understood affirmation to the subconscious and subconscious mind. What is that cures men ill? The removal of subconscious mental and emotional blocks preventing the divine life force to heal. They are called in the spine as knots. As the energy should flow into the spine freely, as you have the electric wiring along that spine, if you are attached to any one of your senses, the energy which would flow automatically to your spiritual eye and make you divine is blocked by your attachment to your senses. Either taste, food, sex, thinking, whatever it is. Any of your five senses prevent you to move the energy upward, for that energy will heal you. Life energy causes the cure. That's why Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word here means life energy, and the mass means the medulla oblongata, at the back of your head. Can we, through scientific affirmation, transcend our ego consciousness and reach our soul intuition? This is the very purpose of such technique. First, using subtle power of thoughts to return to consciousness itself. For mental cure is superior to all methods of physical cure, because will Imagination, faith, and reason are state of consciousness. Are states of consciousness. Therefore, that actually and directly act 
from within. They furnish the motive power that stimulates and directs the life energy to accomplish uh, any definite task. The Master said, see your thoughts as tube through which the energy is flowing into your hundred trillion cells. Every single thought manifests predominantly positive, predominantly negative, or neutral. If I say, I love you, that's positive. I don't care, neutral. And if I say, I hate you, negative. And our mind is constantly roaming like that, without our control. Positive, negative, neutral. So the trigunas, three power from the Om. Why sh should the attention be fixed? When, where should the attention be fixed when we concentrate on the various psychological part of our body? At all time, immovably riveted at the point between the eyebrows. And from there, according to various affirmations, concentration on top of the head, on the forehead, on the medulla oblongata, on the heart center, in the navel, or where the pain resides. You have to use your own personality. You may say, I think my life to flow. Or you may say, I will my life to flow. Or you may say, I know my life to flow. From brain to all my body to flow. Streaks of light do shoot through my tissue roots. The floods of life in the vertebrae do rush through spine and frost and spray. The little cells all are blinking, their tiny mass all are shining. When you feel sleepy in meditation, any time you feel sleepy, begin to affirm. And you will see what it will do for you. What is the best time to imprint affirmation in the subconscious mind? Immediately after awakening in the morning, just before going to sleep. The best time also before meditation. And even during meditation, if you feel sleepy, when men begin to Conscious, make a conscious mental effort to relate himself to the immortal soul rather than to the body that he inhabits. Therefore, the Master say, the scientific ending affirmation will move you into the causal mind, the causal brain. Therefore, as you begin to affirm constantly, your mind becomes more and more powerful, and if you assist that by telling the truth, then it materializes. No one can lie to me because I never lie. One lady came to me and said to me, Toyananda, last night I saw Yogananda walking on water and he told me, I can't help you, go and see Toyananda. I looked at her and I felt she was telling the absolute truth. And because she was saying the, telling the absolute truth, I had the immediate answer given to me. I said, well, you have Kriya, don't you? Yes. You don't practice it. No. That's what Yogananda wants you to know. <laughs> I didn't make it out. It was, the answer was immediate. Therefore, when you have a super conscious experience, my dear, you won't come to Toyananda to ask for an explanation. As long as you have a subconscious experience, there is that. But when you have a real super conscious experience, you have all the answers given to you in the same time. Simple, isn't it? Therefore, only in the degree that you become intensely concentrated, your life will be guided by the superconsciousness of your soul and will reawaken your conscience. The more honest you become, the more truthful you become, the more sensitive you become about others, to not hurt anybody in any forms, the more the truth begins to manifest in your life. Because love and truth are one. Therefore, learn to practice every day's affirmation. And he said, if you want to advance rapidly, even if you do have in the mornings, first thoughts, my Lord, I have no desire. And if I do, if there is any, then my Lord, take them away from me. Every day I pray to God, I say, Lord, thou hast said, Blessed are they who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Starting with me, then our president, then our vice president, then the Congress, then our lawyers, our real estate peoples, our doctors, 
and all those who are in the business, let thy righteousness come upon them as well as upon me. And I think if the Congress knew, I pray for the justice of God to descend upon them, I think they would put a contract on me. <laughs> I'm telling you, and each one of you should do the same, but at the same time, starting with me, as Confucius say, oh Lord, change the world, starting with me. When you have that kind of attitude, then we are going to have again a great nation here. God has to have faith in your nation. God has chosen America and India to establish the United States of the world. I don't care what's being done. You individually, each one of us, must assert himself. To me, duty, honor, and country, it means something to me. I believe in America, as I know, as the country which in the future will establish the universality and begin to unite yourself. In each community, when every community begins to fight and unite between family against drugs, against pornography, against all the problems we have got, we cannot expect our government to solve our problems. Why should they? This is our behavior, isn't it? So, start to practice affirmation. It will give you the power of righteousness gradually. Rise in our closing song. Oh, God, beautiful, realize not God's going to hear you, each one of us individually, and see if we really mean what we are saying. Oh, God, beautiful, oh, God, beautiful, oh, God, beautiful, oh, God, beautiful. At thy feet, O oh, I do bow. At thy feet, O oh, I do bow. O oh, God beautiful, O oh, God beautiful. O oh, God beautiful, O oh, God beautiful. In the forest thou art green. In the forest thou art green. In the mountains thou art high, in the mountains thou art high, in the river thou art restless, in the river thou art restless, in the ocean thou art great, in the ocean thou art great. O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful. At thy feet, O oh I do bow, at thy feet, O oh I do bow. O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful, O oh God beautiful. To the service for thou art service, to the service for thou art service, to the lover thou art love, to the lover thou art love, to the sorrowful thou art sympathy, to the sorrowful thou art sympathy, to the yogi thou art bliss. To the yogi thou art bliss, O God beautiful, O God beautiful, O God beautiful, O God beautiful. At thy feet, O I do bow, at thy feet, O I do bow, O God beautiful, O God beautiful, O God beautiful, O God beautiful. our arms, visualizing yourself under a cascade of light, golden light of the Holy Ghost, which now will heal our bodies. Om. 
purification of our hearts and mind. Om. The awakening of our souls. Om. Peace, love and harmony to the world. Om. Let's pray together, Heavenly Father, Mother, <coughs> friends, friends, beloved God, beloved God. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mashai, Swami Shivtesaji, our Guru, Paramansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, we humbly bow to all of you. Most beloved God, teach me to be in love with thee. And my tears of love for thee, wash away all darkness within me. In the bliss and the joy of my communion with thee, destroy forever all my illusions, all my limitations, all my attachments to this world, to this mind, to this body, which seemingly separates me from thee. That I may realize in a tangible way that thou art ever with me, ever guiding me, ever protecting me, ever loving me, ever wanting me. Make me worthy of thee. Make me worthy of thee. Om. Peace. Amen. And may the infinite blessing of divine wisdom from our cosmic Father and infinite love for our cosmic Mother begin to permeate our life. Begin to permeate our life.